You know, in these very trying times, more so than many, and I've seen riots, earthquakes, other epidemics, financial collapse, but you know what? We're going to pull through and might as well just get back to work. Well, how are you going to get that job, especially if you just graduated? Well, you'll probably start with a resume. And you can spell it like you would the word resume, but if you want to put the accent marks on it correctly, it is French. It takes them over both E's going up. They're called accent aigu for sharp. And you know most resumes, you know how long they're looked at? Just two seconds. And I'm going to give some suggestions to have a snappy resume. And uh, here's a tip. Make all the proper names, yours and the names of the f school and the firm, bold capital letters. You're going to use brackets for the dates of degrees and publications, if applicable, and round brackets for periods of employment. Let's look at one. Here we go. We uh, truncated it so it would be able to fit on the screen a little bit better. And uh, don't use any fancy fonts. Even though I'm fond of Garamond, it does not transport well. You're going to use what? Of course, New Times Roman. And uh, see, the name is in bold capital letters. The name of the school, bold capital letters, as well as the degree. The name of where you worked, bold capital letters. Now, uh, the headings, they're not that important. By the way, no punctuation there. Uh, the zip code proper is two spaces after the state and uh, anything that's associated with where you went to school put that with it you know if you had a position awards etc that goes with the school and if you had a minor uh, a second major put that in there too and if you have other ones it's in course reverse chronological order and if your degree is coming up say expected now, you might have certifications, licenses, don't forget the number, and uh, your experience, your uh, employment, reverse chronological order, we're using now those round parentheses, and for current positions, use current tense verbs. For past positions, use past tense words. And, of course, use those words that are transitive, meaning you can visualize them, managed, implemented, created, you know, in charge of. And uh, you might have some skills. Yeah, Excel. Uh, nobody bothers to put down typing anymore. If you know a foreign language, put that in there. On the other hand, Grand Theft Auto is probably not a good one unless you're applying to a game maker. Some do's and don'ts are don't put down your uh, religious affiliation unless it's appropriate, or even marital status, or even your picture, unless it happens to be in the entertainment industry, in which case it runs four pages, you know, stock shot, action shot, and so on. Uh, otherwise, it's one page. What's the exception, of course? Academics. It just goes on and on. And where are you going to post it? I know, you can go to Monster, Indeed, uh, put it with your placement center, career fairs, and you're going to get responses to do what? Sales jobs. You know what? Go on those for practicing your interview skills and gain that confidence. But I have some better tips. How about internships everybody knows about that one and uh, do a project on a firm you uh, might wind up interviewing the boss and uh, give them a copy of that paper and that paper is going to be what sterling read twice backwards and forwards spell check you know the routine now what well, here's one go to trade association fairs subscribe to their magazine they have something called the meat rack jobs available 
And at the trade fair conference, you might meet someone, chat somebody up. They're going to say, what are you doing? And, you know, one thing leads to another. Don't offer the resume until they ask. Are uh, you going to take a drink with them? No. Even if they're a drinker, they might be a teetotaler testing you. Uh, you know, one thing's going to lead to another. And guess what? If things click, that boss is going to take you to the head of human resources, which is the last person you want to see if you think about it. You know, because normally human resources is in charge of saying no or filling out forms. And uh, we'll talk about that. But wait, don't call now. There's more. Another possibility is temporary employment. Kelly, Manpower, Robert Half, they specialize in accounting and finance. And nice to get paid and an opportunity to get permanent employment. You can collect off unemployment in that case because it's automatic. Now, when you do get your job, start keeping a file. They're keeping one on you. Whether you use it or not, the fact that you kept that file is going to gain you some confidence. That's a killer tip. So at the first day at HR, they're going to, you know, here's your key card, your parking. You're going to automatically, of course, load up on your pension plan. And, uh, oh, by the way, there is a W-4 and a W-2. The W-4 is for your employer, and the W-2 is sent to you to do your taxes. And uh, you're going to make your W-4, it used to be dependents, withholding exemptions for your house, a little more complex. I've posted the site there for you. When you get the W-2 to do your taxes, look at it. It has some information, including your ability to invest in IRAs. So let's start managing your cash. Probably the first thing is pay off those credit cards. 18% for a lot of people, it's like getting 27% in the stock market. And we know how risky that is. And of course, the big difference is it's for sure in the case of paying off your credit card. People wind up paying uh, $2,000 a year just in interest on their credit card. You know, let's look at that in more detail. You know, some gurus, I bet you can think of a couple, they have ideas like, oh, a snowball, the amount, uh, the amount of the balance, the time, or paying off debts first. Wrong, 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 wrong. Go by the amount after tax. Some are tax deductible, some are not. And don't make the debts separate from the investments. Side by side. In this example, we're going to pay off that credit card after tax. It's the highest one. But notice the next one is you're going to invest in your Roth IRA, maybe, and then maybe your pension plan, then maybe pay off the auto loan, because that's not tax deductible, and then maybe go back to investing in the traditional IRA, and then maybe pay off the student loan. And uh, so look at that. Probably the home is the last thing you want to pay off. Well, back to managing your cash. Uh, get those grocery store cards there. Uh, well, first of all, you get all those discounts. And uh, also, you can use it as a cashback ATM. The safety of being in the store and free. Uh, also, with your ATM, it's a debit card. Use it only for cash. Unlimited liability. Uh, for a credit card, use that for purchases. And there's a lot of deals out there. Avoid the ones with the annual fees. Everybody wants their air miles. A lot of them expire. Worth about a penny and a half. On the other hand, free card, cash back. Cash back doesn't expire. Cash back has no minimum. You know the killer ones are Capital One and Chase. Although Chase does have that quarterly thing, but boy, is that worth it. Let's talk about buying stuff. Here's a little rule I made up for myself. How about maybe setting aside something like uh, an hour for every $1,000 of purchase for research, test driving, etc. And, uh, well, think about it. You're going to spend more time like Lynch of the Magellan Fund looking at a toaster than you would planning for your retirement. Good grief. Uh, how about an automobile? Consumers Report, April issue, gives you the cost factors for buying a new car. Uh, you're going to go into the dealer and you try to avoid the auto salesman. You want to go to the fleet manager, now they call it the internet manager, and because you've done your research, you can walk up there and place your order. Of course, the one thing you've got to do sometime is a test drive. Uh, on that one, 
Don't come in with a checkbook. Think about it. Then we're going to save money everywhere. Well, here's a list. It's not applicable to everybody, and it's not exhaustive, although maybe exhausting. Uh, cut your own lawn or let it go rustic. Uh, cut back to basic cable or eliminate it entirely, just getting it out of the air. Really good pictures. Um, go to happy hour. Uh, avoid the beggar requests or play the lottery a lot less often. Uh, everybody says uh, get the cheaper coffee. Uh, driving slower. I don't do that one. Fluorescent bulbs. Everybody does that. Uh, guess what? Higher deductibles on the insurance will lower your premiums in the long run. Uh, get an ATM card that doesn't charge a fee or rebates it. Uh, you can have measured rate telephone service. You probably still want to keep your landline because it's a better safety thing. Always works when nothing else does. Uh, you can, uh, you know, cut your own hair. Uh, walk a little bit farther to park. Uh, you know, uh, you get those dollar off discount coupons. You can get get 4% back on gas with those credit cards. 2.5% with the, the other cards. And fix that leak. Okay. Uh, you know what? Saving 10, 20, 30 cents on a gallon of gas can amount to $300 a year. And then there's the grocery coupons and the dining out rebates. You might uh, look at this. People think, gee, tipping will, uh, if I tip less, that'll save me money, or the power strip, or the recycling, the tin cans. Notice those came in dead last. Now, the whole point here is to save money, but it's to save money to do what? Fund your IRA account in a typical high-tax state. You might save four grand a year, it's listed right here, and that'll be enough to fund your $6,000 IRA because let's say you get a third of it back. There's your killer tip and the means in which to fund it, which is about roughly $10 a day. Well, back to our purchases. We got you a car. And uh, how about a home? Yes, you can buy a home. Now, what people don't realize is the equivalence for a high-tax state for rent. Let's say you pay $1,000 a month in rent. Well, you can probably buy a home at about $1,500 payments a month. And it works out. And you wind up at the end adjusting your withholding W-4 form. And while you're not going to buy a home on the beach, you can buy a castle in the middle of nowhere. And of course, we probably want to do something in between. Well, we got you a job, a car, and a home, and the spouse and or cat or dog is up to you. And the ability to get some four grand a year in savings to fund six grand for your IRA account. By the way, it's seven grand if you're over 50 if you want to. Uh, the Roth is tax exempt. The traditional is tax deferred just like your pension plan. And regardless of whether it's a pension plan or your IRA account, start early. Starting 10 years earlier from 30 to 40 years doubles the amount at the end. And as we will see, getting a no load, low expense ratio account doubles it again. The traditional taxable IRA is for those who have no pension plan, that's what that box says about a retired plan on that uh, statement you get from your employer, and or for those in lower incomes, I've got the numbers laid out here, that little asterisk refers to people who have non-working spouses, they can use the amount show below on the other asterisk, which is the numbers for the Roth tax-free plans, higher limits. Uh, the difference between the two it depends. If you're going to be in a low-income state or a low state of having income, actually it's probably better to do the traditional, although you do set aside less monies. And your preference, and you're going to have to maybe look at this once a year while doing your taxes, you'll want the uh, no-load, low-expense ratio index funds, maybe global growth equity index funds. And uh, here's a tip. Take your age as a percent and make that in risk-free bonds a little bit higher if you want to, well, sleep well, a little bit lower if you want to eat well, and try to lower those fees. Uh, I got one more tip for you. It's above and beyond everything here. And, you know, you want to get some seed money? Try out for game shows. 
I've done seven. You want to speak how loud? 120%. Wear something distinctive. Uh, keep talking until they tell you to stop. Uh, you got me my first home with Dr. C. Invest.